And Billy come out of his office. Right under the bloody dumper. This is where Charing Cross Hospital was set up. Then Charing Cross Hospital was set up. The excavation, or the, the piling, went on for about six to eight months, where they had piles on the, under the main main building up to five foot in diameter right. to pick up uh, the substrata of the uh, London clay. And um, when, when uh, the site was uh, excavated, they came across the seam of pure ballast yeah. that was actually sold to Wilmots, the Wilmot, like Wilmot, ballast you use yeah. for concrete. Right. And it was sold to Wilmots um, as, as pure ballast because we had to dig out something like um, 80 to 90 feet where we were forming the boiler room of the hospital. Right. What was your like, position? What were you doing for Higgs and Hill, wasn't it? What were you doing for them? Well, I, I was classified as an L1 foreman, which was... What was you in? What was, what I, was, I was a foreman carpenter, right. and uh, I was classified as the top. I held the top where I, I could set out or do anything. Um, but over me was um, a site agent and a project manager. Mm. So... we. Uh, we had engineers also working on the site that were doing the main setting out. And when the, the subcontractors were <coughs> working, um, you know, we, we, we made certain that um, they carried out their operations correctly. We had to check all the work they did, especially the shuttering. Was that we, check constantly on the go? Yeah, yeah uh, we, we had to check. Well, the engineer did the setting out. Right. We checked all the work prior to concrete then we handed the project or the part over to the um, <coughs> contractual uh, structural engineers mm. who checked all the reinforcing yeah. and then we, we could start concrete in, in the evening um, there was no time laid out for concrete because it was all site mixed and um, we could start concrete in Four o'clock in the afternoon to lay 150 meters of concrete. Right, so there were no concrete like mixer lorries coming in. No, concrete. no, it, it was all site mixed. So how, and, how, was it, how was it site mixed? Well, they had a great big uh, unit <coughs> that um, would weigh and measure the concrete for its elasticity, right. uh, the amount of water. It was all corrected. So all the stuff is coming out of silos on site. Oh, it's all coming out of silos, and the the actual ballast was um, in great big mounds um, adjacent to the thing, where the a thing called a dally shovel and an operator would push it onto the machine. What, what, what was the machine it would like? weigh. It would be weighed. Right. Weighed. Um, the the water would already be allocated. Yeah. It would be mixed, and also the cement. Right. Would also be weighed, and it would then be. And that's all weighed on that machine. Or on that on that machine. So yeah. it's added on. It's it's weighing it. Yeah, right. it, it. The the man with a thing called a dally shovel, would you'd have a, a mound of ballast. Right. Or more often than not, it was uh, three or uh, three quarter, three quarter shingle down yeah. to pea shingle. Right. And then you'd have a, another silo where where it would have um, sh sharp sand, yeah. and then the mix would be put together, uh, but on, on it was on a proper way bridge, right. <coughs> and um, it was then picked up in a big skip which uh, held approximately about yard and a half of concrete. Mm -hmm. and the crane lifted it right into the position of which there was three cranes on the site. So, if necessary, um, the the crane would lift, put it down. The next way you could move it from one site, one part of the site to the other, to get the concrete where you wanted it. it. And uh, that, that's how it was. Well, that's being poured. You just got you guys 
what well, they, they, they broke, vibrating it. They 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 end up with normally two two poker type yeah. three inch that, vibrators. Yeah, and um, uh, the concrete would be coming over as fast as one was emptied. The next one, it was the crane driver had orders that don't delay anything at all. It must be a constant flow. So just keep mixing and yeah, seal mi mixing and mixing. And then when oh. we topped it all off, the levels were checked, hmm. sometimes by myself or the bloke above me. Um, and that's why we had to stay there late at night to make certain that the thing was the correct level and it had been finished off to the right finish we was looking for. Yeah. And then we would come home possibly half past 10 at night. So how big was that slab? That, this is one slab. Well, we're, we're, we're talk now. We're we're talking about an area that would be, and it would be it would be the the base of the hospital, sitting on piles, piles. and it would be up to three foot, three foot thick. Oh, to the, totally oh, reinforced. Right, okay. Totally reinforced. So reinforced. If yeah. You have rebar and stuff. And you're talking about the rebars and that. Uh, the the main bars which were but was sitting on the piles yeah. that were there could be anything up to an inch diameter. Right. And okay. um, wherever it finished off, with starter bars picking up the next section. Right. Um, so that um, that was all struck off, and then they used to clean the the face of the concrete, just rough it up with a jackhammer, mm. and then you start off again. That that would be your stop end. For the next section, right, and um, square. Yeah. It, it was that uh, they called the shape cruciform. It was a crucifix. Right, so like with, a, with two wings. Yeah, right, yeah, two okay. wings. Yeah, and that that position was placed um, to be directly in line with London Airport. For any reason. Yeah, for, for, well, there was no particular reason, but that's how it set out on the site. Right. But they said that's what what would happen, right. and in the finish they put lights on the roof of the hospital because it was nineteen stories high. Okay. Yeah. I've heard and that was a guideline for the planes coming in across London to. Oh, so not just for them to like not hit it. No. But to, uh, just just to, it, was a, it was a guideline. Yeah. And uh, on on the hospital itself, and. Um, the end that we were mainly concerned with was the the boiler room and the teaching, right. uh, of which there was 19 floors of teaching uh, areas, and um, from that from that they um, uh, I take it they used it because once we finished it, mm -hmm. um, it was uh, for them to do what they wanted with it. Now, how long was Charing Cross Hospital meant to take to build five years. Is that and that, that's kind of stipulated right at the beginning? Or when when I first I finished the job in Camden Town. Yeah. And the first day over at um, Charing Cross Hospital, uh, we had a a project manager by the name of Ted Potter. Right. A very likable bloke, but he knew the business about building. And all the foremen that were going to be on the site, and there was something like eight or nine of us, um, had to go to the conference room that was built on the site. Right. And um, he welcomed us all in. He had an assistant called Tom Browsford yeah. from, from Liverpool. First things first, the program. He stood up and he said, we start in that corner there. We go through one of the main walls around there until we come back to the far corner yeah that is the program for this job it's five year contract and he said everything on that wall um, is included in what he called a critical path which means where equipment mm. for the hospital is very hard to come by yeah um, <laughs> it was arrowed off the program at that particular date, right. so they knew full well it had to be ordered beforehand so that um, it was on site on the critical day that it was needed. 
Right. You couldn't, you didn't rely on it um, coming two days early. To, it had to come on that day to be installed because if craneage was needed, yeah. cranes had to be ordered and stand by for the stuff to turn up right. off of uh, big, big wagons. But following on from there, <coughs> Ted said, right, that's the program. All the critical paths are on there. Right, yeah. any questions? So someone stood up and said, right, well, what happens if the, the subcontractors don't perform? Mm. You know, what, what, what do we do? Well, Ted said, well, look, contact the foreman of the subcontractors. Right. Tell him what the position is. Find out why he's causing trouble. Yeah. Give him two days to correct the labour strength mm -hmm. on the site. If he don't perform within those two days, come and see me or Tom Browsford, my assistant, and what we will do, we will issue issue him yeah. or their company with a seven day letter. If they still don't perform, we will then contact them and tell them their contract has now been cancelled after seven days. Right, so they've got that, that seven yeah. days to sort it out. Yeah, seven days to sort it out. And if they didn't, that was yeah. that. Because he said, it, it's absolutely paramount that this contract is finished in five years. Yeah. Completed, occupied the lot five years. Yeah. So we all went away and um, we, Every Monday morning, the, the surveyors would come round with their sheets and their program sheets, yeah. which they had to put back on the wall in the in the office. And if you had any problems regarding material, regarding subcontract labours, mm. you'd tell them. They'd go back and see Ted, right. and Ted would do the business. Every bit of concrete that was placed is checked by an engineer, yeah. the, the structural engineer from the company that designed the hospital. You never concreted anything until they approved it. Right. And um, it went from, from there. Uh, we had problems with the, the lift shaft um, because oh. when, when you go 19 floors, I don't know they do it with these 100 floor things. No. What you there is a thing called an optic plumb, right. where you, you set it into a position and it looks skyward and you have a, 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 a datum point to work to right, yeah. and then the shuttering as it's going up is moved in the right position for the inner sh um, shuttering before right. the outside is put in with the, the reinforcing or when it's concreted. Right. And then the problem you've got is that the fact that um, you've got to work inside. So we had a, a removable platform mm -hmm. of which we designed it ourselves yeah. that was within the, the size of the, it was a, a three lift, three lift carriage. And uh, we made it so that you could take the flat back, the deck that you were standing on, put the hooks from the crane, yeah release it and they, then they, they would draw it up after the shuttering has been taken out the right. entire, bring it up to the next level yeah. we used to put these um, um, cement sockets into the walls when we concreted that level so that when we lifted the platform up we bolted the bracket onto the side or through the socket yeah, through, through the socket right. and uh, lifted it up bolted it on, then dropped the thing platform back onto the brackets. Right. So we went up 19 floors like that with no problem at all. So that optical thing? Yeah, that, that, that optical... What, what is that? Is it like a telescope or something on the well, ground? Well, it, it's... Um, uh, it's not a laser, is it? Not no, it, it's, um, it, it's very similar to a laser, right. but um, it, it gives you the right position as it's going up. But um, there, there were times when as a secondary me measure, because you've got to keep the, the base of the lift shaft completely free of rubbish, because right. 
the amount of rubbish that does fall down there. But what as a secondary thing, on the opposite side to the optic plum, mm. we had a um, a plum bob that was like a, like a big big turnip right. with a point on the bottom. Mm. And in the, the base of the lift shaft, we had a, a, a socket in the floor right. with the, and the point of the plumb bob yeah. would come down and if the point was over it, you knew full well that you were going up straight. straight. Right. And gotcha. it, it never moved, it, it, was, it was on like a piano wire. Uh, by, by and large, it, it, it was a magical piece of equipment that we designed on the site. Right. You finished the job, you, you finished, I, you I stopped went, working there when it was on the 11th floor. Yeah. Why was that? Where did you go? Well, I then went to Australia. Just like that? Yeah. Just just, thought, no. Sorry guys, I'm off now. I'm no, off. I'm no, I, 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 I told <laughs> Ted, I told Ted what I was doing. Yeah. He said, well, yeah, that's okay. He said, but give me enough warning um, that w when you're going, Right. And um, he, he called me over to the office, well, about nine months later, and he said, uh, any news about your trip to Australia? He, he was quite happy, the fact that, you know, I was going, not not from his point, but, you know, he, he said, um, you know, um, you know, it, it's an adventure, he said, and um, so he, wished he, he wished he the, could do it. Right, so the opportunity but, to do the 10-pound yeah. pump came up, yeah. and you and Eileen decided, yeah. let's give it a go. And... Um, he he, uh, he said, like, when, when do you reckon you, you'll be off? He said, so uh, I can get a, get a replacement. I said, well, it'll be at least a month or six weeks. Right. Fine, he said, um, don't worry about it. So how long had that job been going at that point? to get to uh, about, two year, about two and a quarter years it had been going. Yeah. And we was up to the 11th floor. Right. So we was on programme and um, there was uh, sort of nothing... No, because yeah, you said 19 floors in total. Yeah, 19 floors that were workable, yeah. then you had the roof area on top yeah. of that. Right. And um, that, that was uh, that done. So you went off to Australia? I went off to Australia. When I came back, um, <coughs> Which is well, I, I, I didn't have a job, and um, I, I only said, Bob, have a word with Iggs and Ills. They, they, they might want someone still. So I thought, I'll ring the site. I knew it would be still running. And I spoke to Tom so Brown. How many years had it been up to that point then? Hey? Eh? How long had the site been running up to that point? Um, two. Uh, a couple and a half years going two, up. But that you went it was Oz, three. Right? Coming up to about nearly four years. Right, okay. About nearly. About so it's about two about, years about, it going about up, then you went for about two years. About three and three quarter years. Right. Yeah, because I had a lot of work to do in this, uh, the x ray department. Yeah. And um, about, that was about. Right, and uh, everybody was, you know, you know what to know about Australia, and, all yeah. that. <laughs> and um, uh, so we went from there. Um, so you got your job back there, basically. Yeah, I, yeah well, I, I phoned phoned the site. Well, yeah. I didn't said, you know, give them a call. I mean, it's going to cost you a phone call. So the bloke who answered the phone was Tom Browsford. So he, he, he said, "Who?" I said, "Charlie." Blowed! <laughs> <laughs> I said, I I'm looking for a job. He said, come tomorrow, he said. We, 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 we want people to finish the job. Right. And um, when I, I went there and I started off, I come across my old mate, old Dave Bell, that I'd worked with at, um, hmm. on the South Bank. Right. And he actually took my job over. Uh, oh, when you went? Yeah. To and um, and uh, you know, we, we got on well together. We used to go down to the cafe on Saturday. When we worked Saturday morning, we'd go down to the cafe, have our yeah. cook, cook breakfast and that. Yeah. And <laughs> so, um, and then it went from there on. And um, uh, Ted Potter, we, we, everything was going well. Um, material was coming in okay. Everything was still on schedule. Still, it was still on schedule. Right. He had all of us in the office. Yeah. He said, well, I'm going to ask you something now, he said, all of you. And he said, if you don't like what I'm asking you, you're quite at liberty to go off the site. He said, no one's going to be sacked. He said, it's mm. just the fact that um, I've given um, Mrs. Someone, who is the head of the National Health right. um, at the time, um, I've given her my word that we're going to finish this job completely mm. Ready for occupation in six weeks. 
from that from that from, the, from that particular time. Now I'm talking about um, we are about four and a quarter years yeah. towards completion. So what floor are you up on now? Well, the whole the whole out. building's finished. The right. whole build outside the building is finished. Right. So the roof's on. The, the roof's top. on. It, it's watertight. Yeah. Uh, it's um, it it's. All the uh, equipment is being pushed in, it was down to eggs and hills to push in there. Right. But the hospital had to um, <clears throat> do the necessary fitments of yeah. beds and things like that. We, we didn't do that. And um, about four and a quarter year, and they said, Right, I'm going to say now six weeks, I want to see the whole of the second fixing, decorating. Mm -hmm. Carpentry, joinery, flooring, the whole lot finished in six weeks. Right. And he said, I'm asking you all to work seven days a week. Oh, seven yeah. days a week. Yeah. Tell me if you've got your your short of material. Tell me if you're short of the necessary labour. Mm -hmm. He said, and we'll we'll see if we can do it. And I'll tell you what we did. He handed that hospital over six months ahead of program. Now I don't know what Eggs and Hills got for that. They, they must have done they well, had a well bonus out. For that, they? Yeah, and um, they pass that on to anybody. Yeah. Well, um, you just got your seven days a week yeah. wages. And uh, but uh, the, the wages were very good because we were being paid uh, by the hour, and um, we even ended up with a bonus at the end. Oh right. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, it. A couple hundred quid, I think that's about, about all, but uh, it was good money, you know. It was in 1965. So, was it completed by 65 yeah. then as well? No, we, we, no, we, we started like it in uh, about, about 1965 66 because I came back in 71. Yeah, yeah, so, so I'm all gonna right. mix up with my dates now. Um, but um, it was done, and um, we, we had a, a, a bit of a get together laid on by the in HS and um, so it was all signed off yeah. and handed all, over. All, all signed up and handed over and um, uh, it just went into the snacking stage you know and uh, yeah, yeah but what what we used to do which was a good idea hmm. when we told the, the this it was a young chap but very very intelligent worked for Higgs and Hills right. um, we used to say to him uh, we want you to come into this area to snag it, right. and we would give him a date, say Mon Monday morning you can come into this particular area, mm -hmm. snag it, tell us, give us your sheet, we'll get the contractor, whoever he was, electrical, yeah. mechanical, decorators, painters, the, any floor layers, and we'd get the work done, he would come and check it out, and he would then have a meeting with the hospital board, who would come round, accept it, we lock all the doors so no one could get in there, right. uh, and that was another floor, floor level finished, and uh, that's the way it went. So snag it from the ground upwards. Yeah, uh, as way. you went. Yeah, yeah, and it was being finished. Tell us about these guys that got killed on site. <laughs> where that was and what happened. Well, this, this is the South Bank where the two blokes got killed. Oh right, okay. Yeah, Ted. Only two very, two, very sad events. A very young Australian fell no, than, no more than 10 feet. He hit his head. Hmm. Uh, we, we got, we got um, ambulances, got him to St Thomas's Hospital and he died on the operating theatre. But the, the, how, he, how he died, or how he had the accident, yeah, watch that. Um, <coughs> the whole of the interior to the hall, the, the Queen Elizabeth Hall was finished. Yeah. And, um, we had the stage all covered in brown paper right. and there was a door on the left hand side and a door on the right hand side and if someone was walking through with something on their <coughs> on their feet they would muck up the finish on the it was uh, aphromosia finish flooring what is that like a lacquer or it, something? It, aphromosia is a, a west african hardwood right and um it's on the same sort of colouring as teak. Right. But anyway, it was all finished. Mm. So what they did, 
for where the stage was elevated, they put a scaffolding handrail mm. about four foot high. Yeah. And um, they was hoping no one would pass from one side to the other. <coughs> what, no signs up or nothing? It was all it was all within a locked hall. You know, no one should be in there. Oh, right. But for some reason or the other, the door had been left open. It might have been left open by the engineers that were working in the basement on these right. hydraulic rams that lifted the, the stage up and down. Mm. They don't know. Right. Well, this young Australian bloke took a short cut. Instead of walking around the handrail, he he ducked under the handrail. And went straight through the brown paper. And well, the brown he, paper was over the top. Was, of the, the brown paper was just covering. See, as, as, the, as the elevator took the stair or the platform down, right. it left a void. But the brown paper. So it stood over the top. The so paper was still there. And he, he got under the guardrail. And um, as soon as he put his weight on the brown paper, he went straight, straight through, through, hit his head they reckon on one of these rams right. or, or, on, or on something on his way down. Yeah. <coughs> Someone actually saw him, I think, or it was a bloke working down there, felt him come through. Hmm. They went to assist him and he was unconscious evidently. Yeah. Straight to the office, got an ambulance, got him to St. Thomas's as quick as you could, because it's only the the, about 400 yards up the road yeah, from the, the hall mm. and um, I had, had him on the operating theatre and um, poor bloke died on, you know, before they could save him but I say I, I think he was 23, 24 um, very, very nice young bloke mm. yeah, there was two of them working on the site and um, he was the unfortunate one so that, that job or that part of it was born as finished then was it? It's just protecting the yeah, it was protection on hardwood, right. hardwood finish, yeah. and um, <coughs> but uh, no, it, it that was it. But when it, when it comes to Billy, uh, or or I'll, I'll think you to call him Billy or Old Bill, uh, because um, he was one of those people that um, did all the trunking fresh air trunking on the site right. and um, he was a bloke about 50, 55 and um, he was one of those blokes that was always chatty yeah. and um, he always, if you wanted anything you'd go and someone say, oh go and see Billy and if you wanted any nuts and bolts or anything that he might have yeah. he'd always give you one and uh, that sort of thing and um, this particular day, all the, all the site offices for the subcontractors was actually under Waterloo Bridge. Right. And, uh, he, and he, an eyewitness said, he, he saw him come out of his office. And at the same time, we had a, a small batching plant. Right. What's a batching plant? Where, where they mix the concrete. Oh, okay. Yeah, a small batching plant for concrete. Right. And um, they were working up the road um, adjacent to the festival hall, some job they were doing there. Yeah. And um, they were mixing the concrete on the main site, putting it into a dumper, mm. and then going up to the job, emptying it. Yeah. And it was a full dumper load of concrete. Billy's coming out of the office, the dumper driver's loaded, and he's going to take the concrete off site and back onto the road yeah. and evidently someone heard, heard someone shout his night the, the dumper driver's name right. and he he's in the dumper driver dumper came forward yeah. he evidently turned round to find out who was calling him mm. and Billy come out of his office straight under the bloody dumper and uh, there, I, I would estimate there was a, a good ton in weight of wet concrete in that in that dumper. Well, so the dumper went over it. Yeah, yeah. Basically. It, 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 it must have killed him. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and um, everybody well, it was a sad occasion because everybody liked him. He, he was a good bloke, and um, mm. 
that that was the yeah, like that, yeah. that was the, the facility that uh, no, no one wanted to happen. You see, the, the, the problem with the building industry today, mm. there's too many people with vans. Mm. 